fellowship if you must talk talk to god if you must whisper whisper a prayer as we prepare for worship happy first sunday fellowship i'm veronica dillard reporting your weekly edition of fnn fellowship news network fellowship bible academy is returning this month with a new day and time FBA will now be on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. starting May 30th. This year's theme is next, level up, level up, level up. And we will have in-person and virtual classes. Head on over to our website for more information and to register. Join our Senior Care Ministry for their annual Love Fest on Saturday, May 20th from noon to 3.30 p.m. This will be an afternoon of elegance, socialization, and fun. We are asking everyone to wear red. Please contact the church office by Friday, May 12th to RSVP. Attention, members of the graduating class of 2023. Fellowship is so excited to honor all graduates, pre-K through post-grad on Sunday, June 11th. Registration is required for all graduates. Please go to our website to register. The deadline is May 28th at 1159 p.m. We are praying for the families of Miss Annie Catherine Betts, the mother of Mr. Ryland Betts, Miss Pearlie Mae Davis, the grandmother of Melanie Smith and Stephanie Dunn. Please keep these families and all those that have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. Now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. What's going on, family? What's going on? Listen, it's your friend, your brother, Elder Kevin T. Vassar. I'm so excited. I'm so excited and honored to serve as the Director of Worship and Arts. And today, I have a special announcement. First of all, if you're happy and you're grateful to be alive, come on, take two seconds, clap your hands, and let's bless God for the gift of life today. Come on. Oh, you can do better than that. Come on. Listen, God has been good to us and we're so excited. Today, I have a special announcement for you. I am here to make a special appeal to all of our men. Listen, if you're a man and you're happy about it, if you're a young teenager and you're happy about it, I just want you to wave your hand at me. Come on, I'm looking. We're all my men. Wave your hands, wave your hands. If you're a man and you're glad about it, put your deep voice and say, you're... 
All right, come on, ladies, let's make some noise for our men. We celebrate them. And today, my appeal is for our men of Grace Men's Choir. Mother's Day is fastly approaching, and we absolutely love all of our mothers, and we're going to celebrate them in style. And our men's choir, men of grace, they will be leading us in worship. Come on, you can clap your hands for that. Ladies, you'll be able to sit down, put on your Mother's Day hats, your special dresses, and be honored as, as well as you should be on that day. I am calling for all men, everybody that waved your hand, every man that's a member of fellowship, I need to see you in the choir stand on Mother's Day. Are you listening to me? On Mother's Day, our men of grace will be leading us in worship, and I need all of our men to participate. We're going to have a power pack rehearsal led by our own brother Dexter Walker on May the 11th. May the 11th, I need to see you here in the main sanctuary at 7 p.m. as we prepare ourselves for Mother's Day. Now listen, if you need more information, if you want to know exactly what we're doing, rehearsing, and all of that great stuff, I want you to reach out to us at men of grace at, at fellowshipchicago.com. Let me say it again. Men of grace at fellowshipchicago.com. We have amazing leadership for our choir. They'll receive you and make sure we remain connected. May the 11th, we want to see a rehearsal on Mother's Day. All three services, we coming strong, man. I want to see your face in the place and let's bless God together. Thank you so much and we'll see you then. Hello, fellowship. I'm Marikia from Fellowship's Medical Ministry, reminding you that the Kimberly Louise Hollowell Nursing Foundation Gala is on May 13th at the Harbor International Golf Center from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Tickets are on sale now. Please see the flyers posted throughout the church or visit the websites on your screen to donate or purchase your tickets. Don't miss this event. Let's hit the waters of Lake Michigan for a time of live entertainment, food, and fellowship. Come cruise with us for the 73rd church anniversary, Cruising with the Ship, Saturday, September 9th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. We will board at 12 noon. Go get your favorite white outfit and cruise with Pastor Sharp and the Fellowship family on the Odyssey Lake Michigan. Space is limited, so purchase your tickets today at fellowshipchicago.com. The ship will be docking at Greater Harvest Missionary Baptist Church for their 7 p.m. communion service. Pastor Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr. will be the guest preacher and Elder Eric Thomas is the host pastor. Make sure you meet us there. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and social media pages for these announcements and more. For real-time updates, text Fellowship Chicago, one word, to 55949. And as we move forward, get on your feet and worship with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us rejoice his name together. Good morning, fellowship. Good morning, virtual family. On behalf of our pastor, Reginald Rain Sharp, and Lady Bree, we welcome you to the 1045 worship experience. Will you please join me in a word of prayer? Father God, we come this morning just to say thank you. We thank you, God, for being so good to us. We thank you, God, for being who you are and what you are to us. Now, Lord God, we ask that you allow your anointing to fill this place. Lord God, we ask that you will meet every need in this house. Go through every room, Lord God. Touch everybody that is in need, Lord God. And as we go forth in this worship service, we ask that you allow your anointing to move like never before. Touch the man of God. Touch our music ministries. These blessings we ask in your son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Man, let the church get the Lord a hand clap of praise.
Welcome to the first Sunday of the fifth month of 2023. And God has done so many great things. That's what I want you to do. I want you to find two or three people and give them a hug and tell them God's been good to me. Find your two or three people, give them a fist bump, give them a hug. Tell them God's been good to me. Find you somebody and tell them he's done great things, so many great things, so many great things. He's done great things, he's done great things, so many great things, so many great things. I can't count them up, I can't count so many great things. So many great things, so many great things Woke me up this morning, started me on my way Gave me joy to make it through the day He's done great things, kept me in my mind Food on my table, I know he is able He's done great things, so many great things He's done great things done great things he's done great things God has done great things so many great things so many great things so many great things so many so many great things look over your life look over your life all you see is all you see is, and you're here this morning, cause God's about to do. I said God's about to do. I said God's about to do. I see so many. I see so many. I see so many. Before your year is over. Before the year is over, before the month is over, before the week is over. You ain't got to see it yet, but praise him right now for all of the... Put those hands together. Why y'all gotta watch me now? Y'all gotta watch me now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you're going through a lot, but do you know what I see in your future? I see. They weren't ready for me. They weren't ready. I just need great things. Just say great things. Now y'all watch me, watch me now, watch me now. Look at your neighbor. We gonna rewind and do it again. Say neighbor, all I see over your life is I see it in your family. I see it in your finances. I see it over the church. I see it over your son. I see it over your daughter. I don't care what it looks like. God's about to do something. Come on and praise him for the great things about to do so many great things so many great things I know we look kind of crazy shouting about great things when all you see is bad things all you feel is bad things all you see on the news is bad things but this week we were down at the Drake Hotel 
at a leadership conference. I was down there with some of the local pastors meeting with Dr. Sam Chan and in the other room, they start setting up all these balloons and red, white, and blue colors were everywhere. And you know, I'm nosy, I'm from Georgia, so, you know, if I wanna know something, I just walk up to a stranger. What, what y'all doing over here? I just walked up. I was going to the bathroom. I, what y'all doing over here? They said, the king over in the United Kingdom is being coordinated on Saturday. So I said, but it's Thursday. They said, yeah, we know, but there's a British Parliament Council in the States, and they want to celebrate on Thursday what's going to happen with the king on Saturday. They were celebrating before anything happened with the king. Before the king did anything, they were having a party on Thursday because of what the king was going to do on Saturday. Slap high five with your neighbor. Say, don't wait to throw a party after the king shows up. Party right now. He will heal you. He will pick you up. He will fix it. He may not do it right now, but let's act like the king is about to do something. Take a few minutes and praise God over what he's about to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to move on. I'm sorry. I, I woke up like this. I don't know what's wrong with me today. But I woke up with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up feeling like a breakthrough was going to happen today at church. I woke up feeling like revival was going to break out today. I woke up feeling like I'm not the only one that had a rough week. And since we made it to church, we might as well let the king know. Hey, I bless your name at all times. Well, 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 here we are, here we are, here we are. We got to move on, we got to move on. not the way the service was supposed to flow but it's first Sunday it's communion Sunday and uh, we're gonna go on and flow with the spirit while we're here talking about the king we might as well remember him because that's one of the ordinances of the church do this in remembrance of me and I dare some of y'all to start remembering right now. That's kind of what's been going on the last 15 minutes. Somebody has been remembering what the Lord has done for them. The song said, he's done great things. Can you think about some of those things that the Lord has done for you to God be the glory not just for a thing but for the things he's done we pause now just to remember just to remember just to remember just to remember a lot of churches now rush through communion. I don't believe in that. I believe you stop for a moment. Stop for a moment just to remember. 
Remember Calvary. Remember the blood that was shed for you. Remember when they pierced him in the side on that Friday afternoon, the text in John says water and blood came out. Water, some theologians say, stands for baptism. Blood stands for communion. Literally, the church was birthed through the death of Jesus. You'll catch that later. Something came out of him that gave other people life. What's going to come out of you in a season that feels like it's about to take you out? What is God going to pull out of you so somebody else can live? Whenever God took bread through Jesus to break that bread, it was always to distribute it. He made more with broken bread than he could with whole pieces. He didn't feed the 5,000 until he broke it. At that communion table in the upper room, he did not distribute the bread until he broke it. Why do we keep running from seasons that break us. But he never broke it without blessing it. <laughs> So some of you this morning, I see you, you, you may be breaking, but you're blessed. Break that bread in your hand today. This bread does not just symbolize Jesus, but because you are a part of the body of Christ, this bread symbolizes you. And God can still do great things with broken pieces. So we remember Jesus' sacrifice, but we also remember he's still at work. Breaking and blessing and sending us out to represent him everywhere we go. Church of the living God, let us eat together. Pastor Meeks, all my life, I grew up on first Sundays, my church, we used to have communion on third Sundays, we were one of the few black churches that believed God wouldn't send us to hell for having communion on third Sunday, but on third Sunday, my pastor, Reverend H.F. Shepherd, would start singing, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. If he didn't sing that one, he would ask, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? If he didn't sing that one, he would sing, I am redeemed, bought with the price. Jesus has saved my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, tell them I am redeemed. If he didn't sing that one, we would sing, it reaches to the highest mountain it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives us strength from day to day Never, never, ne somebody shall never. I don't care how low you feel, the blood still has power. Keeping power, saving power, reaching power, healing power. Church of the living God, let us drink.
of the blood of Christ together. Somebody say, I represent Christ and I represent Christ everywhere I go. It reaches to the high. You may be seated. Yes, mountain. If you can, if you don't want to, you don't have to. And it flows. Come on, church. Come on, church. Sing it like you know it still works and it has worked. Come on, let me hear you. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Have you ever seen it reach you down there? Down in the valley of the shadow of death. It'll reach you, it'll keep you. shot over cars, I know we shot over materialism, I know we shot over jobs, I know we shot over money, but take a minute and thank God for Jesus. Thank God for grace. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for a cross on Friday, but an empty tomb on Sunday. I'm not trying to make you emotional, I'm just trying to make you grateful. Look down your row and pass it like you're playing telephone and say it still works. It still works. The blood still works. It still works. 
You didn't tell nobody. I said, look down your row and tell them the blood still works. All right, let me get back on track. Y'all be seated. Be seated. Let me get back on track. Let me get back on track. Let me get back on track. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. to move on. We got guests. We got for guests and visitors. And I would hate for them to think we are incapable of being sophisticated every now and then. I would really hate for them to see us cutting up the way we do. I, I, but if you don't care, I sure don't care. So let the redeemed of the Lord say something. I ain't tell you what to say, but just say something. Somebody shout glory, hallelujah. Lord, I love you. You're worthy of praise. Hey. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Ooh. Can we do it one time for me? And we got to get out of here. Listen. Whatever my life. Come on, one time. We got one time. Let's give it all we got. Let's go. Praise him like his well. I told you the king may not have moved yet, but let's bless him in advance. Whatever, what? Lift their hand and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. Yes, it is. Just lift that hand and holler and be a witness. Say, I know that's right. That's right. It is well. Y'all be seated. Y'all be seated. 
we have um, we have guests and visitors that are here, and I'm grateful for so many. I'm so grateful, 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 grateful for so many of you that have come from near and far to worship with us today. And I pray you already feel welcomed. I know this is what we do at Fellowship. You know, we, this is what we do. We let the Lord have God's way. We don't, we don't try to put the Holy Ghost in a seatbelt. We just say, because listen, it may be some plan that we don't need today. Or some that may be not on the agenda is what somebody needs today. So my main prayer is, Lord, have your way. And by the time we leave out of this church, God, give us what we need today. Strength for the journey. Clarity for our next steps. Peace when we can't change what we're going through. Healing where we hurt emotionally, physically, mentally. Do it for your glory. So somebody can have some power they didn't have for the next week that they didn't have last week. So we just surrender this day to you. We surrender this worship service to you. And we ask that you have your way, God. Speak to us on the levels that we need to be spoken to. Somebody needs you for one thing. Somebody needs you for another. Either way, we admit we can't do this without you. So we thank you for the outpouring of your presence already. And if you have more for us, we just stand with our hands open and say, have your way. If you want to take us somewhere we've never gone before, we just say, have your way. If you want to do something new among us we've never seen, we just simply say, have your way. Even when we're scared, we say, have your way. Even when we don't know the details of what's next, we say, have your way. We surrender all to you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Anybody glad the Lord is already in this place? Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, I'm glad I made it to church. I asked God all week, please just let me get to church. It's one of them weeks that it was like, Lord, I, it just want, if anything else comes through this week, uh, you're going to have to come down yourself and get your boy together. Just let me get to church. I need, it's some healing that happens when you get in the house of God. Am I the only one? Just let me get to church. I figured out by the time I get to church, but I'm grateful to be here and to look over and see so many friends and guests. I'm just honored to have uh, so many guests with us. Any first time visitors of fellowship, can you stand right where you are just so we can celebrate everybody? Guests, friends, visitors, we love you. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Thank you. I love you. Somebody's about to reach out and shake your hand right now and say, welcome to the ship. Somebody's about to find you and reach out and touch your hand and say, welcome to the ship, and I'm grateful for you. If you're watching on the virtual ship this morning, God bless you. Y'all give our virtual ship family a hand. There are more people on the virtual ship than in the ship. Y'all, Pastor James T. Meeks and Lady Jamel Meeks have thought it not robbery to come and worship with us today. As of yesterday, he is officially the pastor emeritus of the Salem Baptist Church of Chicago, House of Hope Fellowship, stand to your feet and celebrate a general in this city, an icon in the kingdom of God. Pastor Meeks, you got to come say something. Come on, come say something. Come say something. Y'all give me a mic for Pastor Meeks. Give me a mic. What's up, man? Fellowship, you know we love you. And uh, since... Salem kicked me out. I headed straight to the ship. We love you, man. We love you. And then, y'all, listen. Another general of the faith. Get ready to pass another microphone. I know he didn't want to do this, but to have Pastor John Jenkins of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden just hanging out with us today come on up man you got to greet us say something and his wife lady trina his daughter is with us y'all show the whole jenkins family some love what's up 
Good morning. I am so excited to be here at Fellowship. I have never been here before. But I've been blessed by the ministry of this church for many, many years. I'm honored to be at the historic Fellowship Baptist Church of Chicago. And I want to just say a word. Y'all got a preacher in this joker right here. This man. That joker. Let me tell you, let me just say one thing. A couple years ago, you know, we do an annual revival at our church. Just watched all over the world. And uh, in 2021 or 20, 2021, we couldn't meet in person. Yeah, that's right. 2022, we weren't meeting in person. And so we had scheduled him to preach. So he sent us a video, and I, we showed it from our sanctuary. Wasn't nobody in the sanctuary, but my production people, my family, and a couple of, a couple of preachers. Why, wow, this man was preaching on the screen. People were standing up, running around the building, hollering at the screen, preach! Thank the Lord for the ministry of Pastor Resident Shaw. Lady Trina, my sister, God bless you. It's so good to see you all. And listen, we have some guests. I served in Macon, Georgia for three and a half years. And I, I, I have friends and family that were garnered through those years. And y'all, some Maconites, some Macon, Georgia's in the house. I want all four of them to stand up. Y'all show some love to some of my Macon family. Miss Camille and Amber and Miss Eva. Did I say it right? Amen. And Miss... Annette, God bless, she got a fascinator on. She said, I'm coming to the ship. I'm going to wear my fascinator today. You're looking good. You're looking good. And I'm grateful for all of you and each of you. Let me get out of the way because something very, very special is about to happen. It's not every day that one of your members receives and is the recipient of a presidential award. One of our members has been has become a recipient of a Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. And what's amazing is, he isn't even, are you even 40 yet? You in your 40s? Or you in your 30s. He's in his 30s and already President Joe Biden has sent word to honor one of Chicago's own, Brother Early Walker is a recipient of the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. And to set this moment up right, to set this moment up right, we have with us, we have with us, I believe, a congressman. And I want to say the name right. Now, they tell me I got something on my notes. Oh, yeah, I got to say this right. The United States Congressman Danny Davis and State Representative Marcus Evans are here to present this special award. Let's welcome them to the pulpit at this time. Come on, fellowship. Don't hate, celebrate. One day we may participate. Well, thank you all very much. Every time I walk in this building, I am renewed. And I say, God, me, all thy great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Given honor to the Almighty God, to the pastor of this great, historic, spirit-filled, program-rich church, all of the associate ministers, my good friend, Reverend Retired James Meeks, all of the elected officials that I see spread throughout the room, my dear friend, Betty Magnus, to, to the Benson family and all of those who have come. 
It gives me a great deal of pleasure. As I was driving over, I came across many streets that were being resurfaced. You've seen them. And that's because Illinois just got $17 billion from President Joe Biden and the rest of us to make it happen. But to be able to present an award lifetime to a young man. I remember the scripture, remember thee thy creator in the days of your youth. Here's a young man who, you know, you think of gray hair or you think of no hair or you think of all the travails, but in his young days, he has contributed significantly to get to the attention of the president of the strongest, most delighted nation on the face of the earth, the United States of America. So Brother Walker, I say congratulations and it's my pleasure to just stand here with another young man, young member of our Illinois General Assembly, who passes bills almost every month, Representative Marcus Evans. Marcus. Thank you, thank you. It is my first time here, and I'm telling you, I can feel your pastor. God is on your pastor. I can feel it. My first time here. Early Walker is my friend. We've hung out. We've spent time together. This man is doing all he can to make a difference in the society. So, so proud to be here. And thank you to the Congressman Davis, the great Congressman Davis, and our president for honoring a South Side man, a young man, a businessman, an entrepreneur man. He hiring people. My friend, Early Walker. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Well, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Y'all a little bit too quiet here. I said, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. First and foremost, thank you to this legendary, legendary Congressman Danny Davis. Let's give it up for him. Also, State Rep Marcus Evans, everybody. And to my pastor, and First Lady, Lady Bree, Pastor Sharp. Let's give it up. We got to show our self-respect, y'all. And man, we got Pastor Meeks and Lady Meeks in the house. Man, I feel honored. I don't know if this is a coincidence or what, but man, let's give it up for Lady Meeks and Pastor Meeks. <clears throat> you know, it's not every day that you get an award from the White House. So I prepared a few words for such a time as this. My fellow Chicagoans, it is with a deep gratitude and humility that I accept this Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. I want to first dedicate this honor to my family, who have been my rock and my support as I have served the public. Their love and sacrifice have made it possible for me to pursue my calling and to work the betterment of our society. Can my family stand, please? My kids, my beautiful wife, my parents, my sisters. In addition, I would like to thank all the political leaders and to the best publicists, if I don't say that, I'll get in trouble, Sean Howard, and to Mary Cruz and Dr. Nietzsche and the entire High Society Management Team for this nomination. And to all of those of you who have played a role in me receiving this award. Let me say this, this recognition is not just for me, but for all of those who have stood with me for the fight for a better Chicago, for a better America. But today, my heart is heavy, y'all. For too long, we have seen the devastating effects of gun violence in our communities, especially here in Chicago, where crime rates are soaring and poverty is on a rampage. We need resources, my friends. We need education, job training, and mental health services. We need to invest in our communities and in the lives of those who call this home. It is time for us to come together as one nation under God 
to address this crisis and to ensure that our children are safe and secure. This is why I founded my not-for-profit, I'm Telling Don't Shoot, because we are dedicated to finding to solutions to end gun violence in our communities. We believe that every life is precious and we will not rest until every child in Chicago can grow up free from the fear of gun violence. But let me tell you this, dear people, we cannot do this alone. We need the support of our government. We need the support of our law enforcement. We need the support of our communities. We need to work together to find common sense solutions that will keep our streets safe. Just a day ago, a young police officer by the name of Ariana Preston was senselessly killed. Her death is a tragic reminder of the urgent need for action. We must honor her memory by coming together to end this crisis once and for all. As I stand here today, I am reminded of the words of our former president, Barack Obama, who said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So President Biden, I urge you to hear these words, to take a bold action to address the pressing issues our city is facing. But this is not just a political issue. It is a moral issue that touches the very heart of our society. I know that we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, to care for the vulnerable, to work for the justice and peace. But the recent tragic death of this CPD officer, Ariana Preston, is a stark reminder of the urgent need to address the root causes of violence in our society. My friends, let us stand together in faith and in determination. Let us pledge to make America a place of all God's children where we all can thrive together. Together, we can create a safer, more just, more prosperous future for all. Well, President Biden, since I have your attention, I implore you to take a bold action to address the gun violence and other pressing issues facing our nation. We need your leadership. We need your commitment. We need your courage to make the real change happen. So together, let us create a society that is more just for compassionate and more loving for us all. God bless this great church. God bless this great pastor. God bless this great city and God bless America. Thank you. Now, some of this is just because I want to touch it. I never held something like this. Normally, you go to the White House for something like this. He wanted to do this at his church. Y'all show some love. Come on, show some love. Bless you, Congressman. Bless you. Come on, I said, show some love to him now. Show some love. We're big on complaining about our brothers. But I'm so grateful that he's doing a great work and already has a national attention because we have so much work to do here. Can I go on and preach? Can I go ahead and preach and share? Come with me to the book of Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. We'll raise the offering in a minute, so don't leave early. Amen. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. Don't leave early tomorrow. Let me tip out. Don't tip out this Sunday. Hang around until the end, until after offering. Then you can tip. Amen. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. This was not the sermon that I had prepared. I, I sent my sermon notes in on Tuesday. The media team was all happy and excited. And then the Lord changed my plans. 
And so this is fresh off the press. I'm telling you now, it may not all be neat and succinct, but it is what the Lord wants me to tell you. And so I'm going to tell you what the Lord is telling me to tell you. Job chapter 1, verse 20, verse 21 reads like this. Job chapter 1, verse 20 and 21 reads like this. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and ask them, What do you do after a rough week? Thank you. You may be seated. What do you do after a rough week? Some of us didn't, almost didn't come to church today because it's been a rough week. If it hadn't been one thing, it was another. Some things that you had never intended to have to address, you had to address it because it's been a rough week. Some emotions you thought you had your grip on, you did not, and it made it a rough week. Mother's Day is coming up, and for some of us, we're probably planning now on what we're going to do to avoid the reality of Mother's Day because mothers are absent. Mothers that were once with us, walking grandmothers and mother figures that were once right beside us are now in that great cloud of witnesses. And some of us, our mothers are living and there's still tension between the relationship. Mothers who run from the reality of Mother's Day because it forces you to look at the relationships that aren't working. Tension between you and your child. Tension between the reality that you want to be a mother and you watch young women have multiple children who don't want them. And here you are with degrees and a husband and living in a house ready to rear a child and it seems like you're having so many complications to get. It's been a rough week. It's a rough week. It's been rough for the world. Mass shootings in Atlanta in a hospital. Mass shootings in Allen, Texas just yesterday at a premium outlet mall. Eight dead confirmed 30 year old message me a 30 year old message me this morning and said pastor pray for me I'm being rushed to the hospital right now my heart rate is at 200 and they have no idea what's going on I've never seen so many 30 and 20 year olds with heart challenges and having strokes and heart attacks Jamie Fox is in the hospital still recovering from a sudden stroke that happened in the middle of him recording a movie. Chico, California, just last night, there was a shooting at a party. It started out as a fight, but then it turned into gun violence. Ariana Preston, who we just heard about from Brother Early, one of our own, a 24-year-old Chicago police officer gunned down in front of her own house between Friday night and Saturday morning, and y'all, it gets worse. She was slated to graduate with her master's degree on May 13th. What do you do when everywhere you look, bad news just keeps coming in? There's breaking news on the TV, but let me come a little closer. There's been some breaking news in your own life. Not breaking news because it's urgent and sudden or shocking, but breaking news that literally breaks your heart. When you look at your own life, when you assess your anxieties, when you sift through your struggles, when you do investigations on the things that cause you to worry, when you look under the microscope of your own life and see how much you're carrying, and people think that because you're blessed and you're prosperous and you have have a promotion and you drive a nice car and you live in a safe neighborhood quote unquote that all is well for you but they forget with promotions come pressure and, and, and sometimes when you go up the altitude shifts and you can't hardly catch your breath because of how high you've been living yes it is better to be an eagle than a chicken but eagles have trouble too and there's some people in here who are blessed and everybody forgets to pray for you they pull on you but they forget to pray for you because you look like you have it all together but I believe I'm talking to about 200 of y'all in the room and I believe there's at least one person on every row that can holler back at the preacher and say Shaw 
job. I don't know if you've been on the phone with me or in my emails or reading my text messages, but I am one of them. I am one of the ones that you are describing. I came through a rough week and I don't know why I'm still here. I don't know how I'm still here. I really don't feel like all this worship today. I really think y'all should give me a trophy just for showing up because I've cried this week and I've worried this week and I've had phone calls to come in that I could not avoid this week. I've had some stress on me this week. I've had some issues to deal with this week. I've had to sit with my own reality this week and then here we are dressed up. Look at that person beside you. They smell good. Nails done. Hair done. Everything did. I said nails done. Hair done. Everything did. I mean they are dressed up. Lip gloss popping. Their edges are laid. That wig or that weave is right in place. That suit has been. But if I cut one layer lower there is a person sitting in that seat wondering how in the world am I going to hold it together to get through this month. It's just the fifth month and already it feels like a full year. What else can happen Jesus? We've already had a full year in just five months. What do you do after a rough week? Well if that's the question you have Job had the same question and I believe what he went through was worse than what a lot of us have gone through. I read to you Job verse chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 but if you moonwalk backwards and go to verse 13 watch what happens to Job all oh, it seems like back to back one day verse 13 one day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking and eating edibles in the eldest brother's house a messenger uh-huh just keep looking straight ahead don't tell on yourself a messenger came to Job and said the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding beside them and the Sabians fell on them and carried them off and killed the servants with the edge of a sword and I alone have escaped to tell you while he was still talking another one came and said the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them I alone have escaped to tell you and then while that person was still talking here comes another one saying the Chaldeans formed three columns made a raid on the camels and carried them off and killed the camels camels and, and, and the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you and while he was still speaking another one came and said your sons and daughters were doing the cubic shuffer and the bico shuffer and they were eating and they were drinking some Casamigo with a little tequila and they had a little wine and they had a little a little Jack Daniels and they had a little look uh huh and they were over at the house enjoying themselves and suddenly out of nowhere a tornado a great wind across the desert struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they all died did you hear me all of his children and died at the same time because the house collapsed on itself and the, and the reporter said and I alone have escaped to tell you then Job arose tore his robe, shaved his head, fell on the ground in worship. And I know some of you see yourself in this text because it's literally if it's not one thing, it's another. It just keeps coming. Bad news just keeps coming. You deal with one messy person, here come another one. You deal with one church issue, here come another crisis. You deal with one issue with your child and here comes another issue. If it's not the house, it's the job. If it's not the job, it's your money. If it's not your money, it's church people. If it's not church people, it's your bills. If it's not bills, it's your emotions. If it's not your emotions, it's your grief. If it's not your grief, you got to a headache. If you don't have a headache, you don't have nothing to wear. And you got something to wear, but you can't find nothing to wear because you got so many clothes all over the house. You just stressed. I got emails I got to respond to, voicemails. And then somebody say, I called you and you ain't called me back yet. Girl, sit down. If you knew all I was carrying, you would apologize for calling me. I'm trying to figure out how to breathe. I'm overwhelmed and I'm under. I But come a little closer. I know we saw the repetitive pressure in the text, but did you see the repetitive line? I alone have escaped to tell you. I alone have escaped to tell you. I alone have escaped to tell you. There was at least one person that made it through every tragedy that lived to tell what happened. Come here. You don't know it, but the person you sitting beside is that one person who alone has escaped a whole lot and they've lived to tell it. I'm not about to make you shout or ask you to shout shout but I implore you in the name of Jesus if you are alive after all you've been through if you have survived some things that could have taken you out too yes some did not make it and we give we give our prayers to them but somebody in here ought to fill this house with gratitude that that could have been your lot that could have been your child that could have been your casket that could have been your funeral that's why we've been shouting today because somebody got a survivor shout Take 10 seconds and fill this house and your house with some worship just because of what you survived. 
Funerals are not the only celebration of life. We ought to celebrate life up in here. Why y'all so loud? And why is the preacher so demonstrative? And why have you already had a praise break 15 minutes into the service? And why did you sing so many songs? Because we are alive. And you don't know how many times the devil tried to unalive us. But the fact that we are still alive, still in our right minds, still got a reasonable portion of health and strength, got a little joy left, little laugh left, little peace left, little family left, little sanity left. I'm going to bless God from now into eternity because I've lived through some stuff. So yes, you had a rough week, but if you're here this morning, it means you made it. So first of all, just thank God, at least I'm still here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a few more minutes. Yeah. There was a shooting in Atlanta. I told y'all that already. I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself. There's a shooting in Atlanta, and, and y'all, it didn't hit me to hours later while I'm watching the police officers run around trying to find the 24-year-old who started the shooting. I'm watching police officers run around in Atlanta trying to catch the man. And, I, and, and it didn't hit me to literally hours later, my brother is an Atlanta police officer. So, so immediately my heart starts speeding up and I got worried and I, I said, Bree, it just hit me, Brandon's down there. And so I called my brother and I said, hey bro, I know your phone's blowing up. He said, no, not really. I said, what you mean? I said, you don't hear about all this stuff going on in Atlanta? The guy walked in the hospital and started shooting people and he ran away. Nobody could find him. He said, yeah, I, I was off and I was at home sleep. <laughs> See, I'm up here worried about something that wasn't even a word. That's a word right there. Some of y'all worried about something that ain't even happened. You'll sleep through a storm. Folk ask you, did you hear about it? I ain't heard nothing about it because I was resting while everybody else was wrestling. Because he alone escaped. To t and so, 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 so three things. Let me tell you, because I don't know how this is going to end because I feel preach in my feet. And, and, and so I'm, let, let me give you all three things right now. So at least you can go home and say, preacher, he gave us all three. Now, if I'm going to get to it, I don't know. But I'm going to give it to you all right now. Number one, when you've gone through a rough week, number one, lean into your grief. Write it down. Write it down. Pretend like you take notes and just appease me today. Lean into your grief. Grab your phone and write it down. Lean into your grief. Tell your neighbor, lean into your grief. Then number two, number two, here it is. Tell them, tell them, tell them. So everybody got it. Look to God. Look to God. Look to God. It's so simple, but it's so profound. Look to God. I'm going to lean into my grief. I'm going to look to God. But then thirdly, I'm going to learn to keep going. I'm going to learn how to keep going. Sharp, I know you're a Bible preacher. Is any of that in the text? It is. Lean into your grief. Verse 20 says, then Job arose. After all this tragic news, they just keeps coming kept coming, kept, Job arose tore his robe, shaved his head fell on the ground and he worshipped Job arose, tore his robe shaved his head, fell on the ground and worshipped, Job arose stood up, tore his clothes, shaved his head in the Old Testament in Hebrew culture when you were grieved, when you were tormented when you were under trauma when you were, your heart was broken, when you were in despair the way you grieved as a believer of God is you shaved your head or you tore your clothes, if you were an unbeliever scholars say they would cut themselves but those who believed felt no need to draw blood or harm themselves but they would let their clothes and the shaving of their head be a representation of what was happening in their heart because my heart was breaking I need to rip something I need to let go so I don't want my hair, my hair doesn't matter have you ever had a day you were in such pain it didn't matter what you look like shave the head tear the clothes and the Lord gave me a fresh revelation because when you're grieving you need to tear something and you need to shave something so people can see things aren't normal 
See, we've been taught in this society that crying is weak. It is not weakness to cry. It is not weakness to admit I need help. Sometimes you need to grieve. You need to tear your clothes, shave your head, not literally, but emotionally and spiritually. You got to show people I'm not all right. And God deliver us from playing Halloween all year long. God deliver us from coming to church and pretending like everything is all right when it's not all right. Every now and then you need to come to the altar and cry. Talking about all oh, my mascara is running. Nobody cares about your mascara or your makeup. When you need a miracle, forget your makeup. When you need a touch from God, forget your lip gloss and lipstick and what shoes you got on. You better learn how to kick them shoes hurting your pinky toe off. Get you some tissue. Let that snot and them tears run because you can't heal what you won't reveal. And some of us keep delaying our deliverance because we're in denial. Oop, back it up. Some of us are delaying our deliverance because we're in denial. Every now and then, church, you better embrace grieving. You better learn how to cry and don't care who's looking. When people ask you how you doing, stop being churchy. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored and too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed and too equipped to be whipped sit down and tell the truth my child is on my last nerve there is a drink I can't wait to get to and I'll have it with you or without you y'all having communion today I'll have it tomorrow yeah have you ever had pressure on you where you just had to lift your hands and say it's me oh lord Wait a minute, I'm waiting on the real saints to show up because some of y'all pretending right now. I need some real saints right here who can admit I've had to lean into the grief and lift my hands and say, Father, I stretch. Look down your row and say, stop pretending. You don't lose all you've lost and just bounce back. It takes time to heal. It takes time to recover. And you need to tear your robe and shave your head because blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. But if you don't mourn, it'll be hard for comfort to find you. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, lean on into it. Lean on into it. Number two, here it is. Look to God. I'm talking about those who've had a rough week. Am I talking to anybody? Okay. Uh -huh. Look to God. Here it is. Job arose tore his robe, shaved his head, fell on the ground, and worshiped. And he said something while he was worshiping. Naked I came into the world. Naked I shall return. The Lord gave and has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked I came into the world. Naked I shall return. The Lord is given and he's taken away. Still blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is given and taken away. Still blessed be the name of the Lord. You, 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 you see how if you watch the lyrics of the song, it went from his flesh back to the Father. It went from his pressure back to a power. Did you catch it? Naked I came into the world. Naked I shall return. The Lord. The, the Lord. Now, now we looking back at the Lord. The Lord gave and the Lord took. Everybody shouts over the Lord gives. Or we'll have a good praise break over the Lord gives. But how many of us have enough spiritual maturity to say even after the Lord takes. I still bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. See, I know, I know, I know, but the Lord does take. He takes our loved ones and he allows our loved ones to be taken. The Lord takes our jobs and takes our security. And sometimes the Lord takes what we were leaning on for self-assurance. And the Lord will take that job from you. And the Lord will take that boo from you. Have you walk around singing songs that you never thought you would learn the lyrics to? Yeah, you're the coffee that I need in the morning. You're the sunshine in the rain when it's pouring. Give yourself to me. Give it all. Just singing every sad R&B song you can find. Every sad song you can find. The Lord takes. 
And I need you to grow up in your faith. Because if you can't take God's taking, you're going to always be quitting. You're going to always be in the, the Lord takes. But you can't just focus on him taking. Because he's given so much. And every now and then you ought to fill this house with worship. Just thinking about some of the stuff he's given you. I know he took some stuff, but can you focus on what he's still giving? I'm talking about a God that gives. Gives peace in a storm and gives joy and sorrow and gives jobs where we're, where we're lacking and gives us clarity where we're confused. He gives us sunshine after cloudy days. Has God ever given you something? And so I know you in a taken season, but still thank God he's also given after he's taken. And he still takes, but he still gives. Y'all not feeling me. I was not here last Sunday down in Houston, Texas, preaching with Pastor Jakari Davis celebrating his 20th preaching anniversary. He has a whole tribe as a family. He has four children. And now Bree and I have no children. So when we get around people with a whole village and a whole team like that, you know, we go to dinner. It's a lot because all the babies are under the age of eight or nine years old. And so it's four of them, four of them, a whole village. It takes a village to raise a child, but some people have a village already. And so he had a village. We had the table. We're trying to eat. I love you, Pastor Davis. I ain't Ain't saying nothing about you. I just love you, and it was a great time, and I enjoyed all your chilling. And we had a great time eating, but you know, it's, it's kind of startling when you don't have children and you're around all the babies. And, and so Brita fell in love and she holding on to the youngest baby. It was a lap baby. That's southern for the baby stays on your lap. And so Bree's holding on to the baby, and I'm looking at Brie like, don't get no ideas, amen. And then uh, she's holding on to the baby. And she just, oh my God, he's so cute. Oh my God, he's so cute. Oh my God. And I'm just Chill, shouted, and so, uh, and so, you know, the baby is all on Bree's bracelets because the bracelets. I mean, that little baby was just enchanted and enthralled and engrossed. He was just seduced by the glitter of Bree's bracelets. So the baby done snatched the bracelet off, and now he's mouthing and teething. So you know what the baby's about to do with that bracelet? Head is straight to the mouth, and they kept pulling it back, and he. Put it back, and then they pull the bracelet back. He's trying to eat the bracelet, and they pull it back. Then his mama turned around when she saw that there was a tussle going on, and, and she watched what was happening, and the baby wanted to put the beads in the mouth. And, and finally, one time, he got it. Oh, the joy and ecstasy of that little baby. Just to taste those little glittering beads. And his mama said, uh-uh, snatched it, put it on the table. And that baby said, oh! I said, God, you better fix it. And before you knew it, while he was in the middle of crying, the mama put a pacifier in his mouth and the baby calmed back down. I said something, but you missed it. The mama took the bracelet, gave a pacifier, still sleep, took the bracelet, gave a pacifier. Right after she took it, she knew to keep him calm. She had to give him something else. And I'm here to tell you, you got a God who's just that loving, just that compassionate, just that. After God takes, God turns around and gives you something. Matter of fact, shake your neighbor's hand and use sanitizer later and hold it like you got some oil on your life. And say, neighbor, I know it's been a rough week and I know some things have been taken. But tell them, stop looking at what was taken. And thank God for what he still gave you. Still in your right mind. Roof over your head. Portions of strength for tomorrow. Peace in spite of all you've been through. Friends that call you. Money in the bank. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for still being God. Look, look. Look back to God and tell God I'm with you if you take or if you give. And then you got to learn to keep going. Y'all know I'm Baptist, but I got a little code you can me. Tell seven people, keep going, keep going. Yeah, 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 tell them keep going. Some of y'all ain't said nothing yet. I said tell seven people, it's the number of completion. Tell them keep going. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's how you keep going. You've got to learn how to find his name. Because the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous can run in and they are safe. I said just bless his name. Barack his name. Focus on his name. Because whatever season you walk in, 
There's a name for that. Some of y'all ain't feeling me yet. If you've never watched Martin, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you ever watched the sitcom Martin, you know that one man can have many names. Some episodes, he was Martin. And other episodes, he was Dragonfly Jones. And other episodes, he was Otis the police officer. And other episodes, he was, yeah, the little boy with snot hanging out his nose and his hat turned backwards. And other episodes, he was Shanene. But depending on the episode, would determine what he was called. Some of y'all still look at me don't know what I'm talking about God is the same way depending on your episode will determine what God will be that's why God said I am that I am meaning I will be whatever you need me to be if you've been sick you know he's a healer if you've been broke you know he's a provider if you've been slipping you know he's a keeper if you've ever been trapped you know he's a savior if you ever been in the dark you know he's the light if you ever had your heart broken you know he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator reach over and shake somebody's hand for the second to last time just be open even if you don't like them and shake their hand and say neighbor keep on going you may be sad you may have to cry you may be discouraged you may be depleted but whatever you do keep on going keep on going for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy y'all keep sitting there I'm preaching all of this are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us Tell somebody, keep on going. For we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God. And to those who are called according to his purpose, tell them, keep on going. Because you'll mess around and get to Romans 8, verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels or principalities nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus tell somebody keep going because weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning tell them keep going because now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless uh, before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Keep on going uh, because goodness and mercy uh, are going to mess around and follow you all the days of your life. Uh, keep on going because uh, the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? Uh, the Lord is the strength of my life. Uh, of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, when my enemies uh, and my haters uh, and messy people come up upon me uh, to eat up my flesh, uh, they stumble and fall though a host and army can come up against me in this will I be confident one thing that I've desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord to behold the beauty of the Lord in his temple I said all of that just to say this for in the time of trouble he shall hide me under the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me the devil don't even know where I am cause I've been hidden under the refuge of God shake that hand one more time and don't shake it like a dead fish hold it with some oil on your life hold it like you feel a breakthrough in the room hold it like we don't make it through this hold it like their story ain't over look them in the eye and say neighbor keep on going and tell them be not dismayed whatever betide you God will take care of you through every day all the way he will
Somebody holler, keep going. One Friday, they killed him. One Saturday, they buried him. But early Sunday morning, didn't he get up with all power? in his hands and because he lives I can face tomorrow somebody better come get me because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future my life is worth the living just because Every hand lifted. Lord, it's been a rough week. But we come to you with all of our faith. And we shout, thank you. Because you've helped us every step of the way. Tears have fallen. Strength has gotten weak. Uncertainty has moved in as if it's a guest that plans to stay for a long time. But Lord, I ask that you help us to look to you. Yes, you've taken some things, but you've given so much. And we choose to focus on you. Bless your name and try to keep moving forward. Help us, Lord, we can't do it without you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Do me a favor, Shh, the music is playing, but I don't want you to mess up this moment. Don't just get caught up in the excitement. I want you to know God is trying to do something. I need you to be a minister right now. We're about to get out of church. I want you to look at a person and say, hey friend, it's so good to sit by you. Tell them if you need Christ, if you need a church home, if you need to make some changes, or if you need a covering for a temporary season, fellowship is waiting on you. Tell them God is waiting on you. If they need to come, would you escort them down front? Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Come on, my brother. Come on, my God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. Bless you, man. Bless you. Stay right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Promise to keep me. Promise to keep me. Never. Never to leave. Never. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. Welcome home. Stay right there. Bless you, brother. What's up, man? Keep my life clean. Come on, I see you coming. Fellowship, make some noise for our new friends, our new members. Come too far. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Welcome home, God is. Bless you, brother. Moves all pain. God's got you. Promise to keep me. Never to leave me. Never ever. Never What's up, man? Ever. Bless you, brother. I've got to fast and pray. Hey, bless you, mama. Keep my life clean. Bless you, brother. God bless you. Oh, man, a whole family. Welcome, 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 welcome. Come too far. One more time. Everybody say, God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. Moves all pain, bless you. Welcome home. Promise to keep me. Bless you. God bless you, my sister. Bless you. You bring it Keep my life clean. Lord have mercy. I want to go with him. Oh, yeah. 
yes, I do. Come too far. Never going back. God is the joy. God is the joy in the strength of my life. God is the joy. God is the joy in the strength of my life. Say it till you feel it. God is the joy in the strength of my life. Say it till you see it. God is the joy in the strength of my life. Speak life over your life. God is the joy in the strength of my life. God is Yes sir Speak it over your family And say God is the joy God is Now everybody clap those hands God bless you Fourteen have come already. Fourteen have come already. Come on. God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is the joy and the strength of my life. Strength of my life. Strength of my life. Strength of my life. Strength of my life, strength of my life, strength of my life, strength of my life. Can we welcome our 14 new family members into the family? What's up? I pray as we join this journey together. We draw closer to God. We're not a perfect church, but we serve a perfect God. And I look forward to growing with you on this journey. Life, life, I speak life, abundant life, new life, and one day we'll have eternal life. But whatever the enemy's been trying to take from you, I pray God gives you back double double peace whatever old friend left I speak new people are coming that are going to be better for you in this next season let me leave it alone because I see some stuff yep first touch ministry can you all follow with them follow with them follow them they're going to get some information to you and from you we want to connect with you we don't want you just come in and have a moment this is a movement in your life. Fellowship, turn up and let's thank God for these families, husband and wives and children and sisters and brothers. God God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is the joy and the strength of my life. Yes, sir. Yes, God is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. Take that echo out of there. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. It's giving time on the ship. Bring me way down. It sounds real good. But today is our fun first Sunday. Every person, yeah, come on and thank God. We're paying off this million dollar debt so that we can be a debt free church. And I'm happy to report to you that we have already raised as of April $368,000. That's it, right? $368,000. So we're ahead of where we really need to be. But I ask God to help us before May is over. Go ahead and get to 500000 So we're going to eliminate this debt. If it's the last thing we do, and I want to thank you. Look, we got some testimonies up in here. On Easter, all his debt got paid off in service. Y'all celebrate again. I know, I know it's old news, but it's still, it's still good news. And so God is doing it in our lives individually. God is doing it for our church collectively. And we've been straining and we've been growing and we've been going. 
and we're going to get it done. But I believe after this month, we're going to hit $500,000. After this month, we're going to hit $500,000. I, I don't know how it's going to happen because the good news is we got the money. The bad news is it's in your pocket. And so, listen, this is what we're going to do. Only if you're giving the $100 or above for the first Sunday giving. That's what this first offering is for. So our deacons are in the aisle. Thank you, deacons. Don't they look good? Every deacon in the aisle. Listen. Shh, bring me way down. But it's good. Keep it right there. All this giving is for is fun first Sunday. You got me? Save your tithe, save your offering right now. We're going to give it. On Tuesday, I didn't take up an offering at all because the Lord told me not to. It had to be God. And the Lord promised me that if we just would not take an offering, I told you to go be a blessing to somebody else before the week is out. That's what we did. So I'm believing that God is going to multiply our efforts today because we were obedient on Tuesday night. Pastors don't not take offerings at church. Y'all do know that, right? Because we need salvation is free ministry costs. To do this well, it costs. So we need you. But the Lord said, don't take an offering. I said, all right, Lord. It's your church. Now, today, we taking up an offering. Hit your neighbor say, today we is. Today we is. Now, fun first Sunday only. If you're bringing your gifts online, make sure you specify fun first Sunday. F-U-N. Because we're focusing our undivided attention on next. That's the thing for the year. It's the year of fun. Focusing our undivided attention on next. Having fun, but we're focusing on where we're going. If you're giving online or giving through your phone, if you have your phone and you want to give, turn your Wi-Fi off so you can sew. And then turn it back on. Let's bring our gifts now. God bless every gift and giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Just for fun, first Sunday. Come on, bring your gifts. Bring your gifts. Bring your gifts. That $100 seed. We have special gold envelopes just for that. We're on our way. We're on our way. I'm sowing $1,000 today towards Fun First Sunday because I'm not going to ask you to sacrifice, and I'm not sacrificing as well. Amen? Thank you, Miss Betty. Thank you, members of our church. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I believe a miracle is coming before the year is out in this effort. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I, I just sense a miracle is going to happen where a large lump sum of money is going to help us accelerate. I, I keep hearing the word acceleration over our church. We're going to get there faster than we thought. I wish I had three people with faith that could holler back and say, I know that's right. I'm not just talking about this money. I'm talking about everything God has for us is going to happen faster than we thought. I didn't see a lot of people walk, so I'm praying all the rest of everybody is on the phone. Let me see that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't got my glasses on, but I sure can see that. Now, let's take a moment. Let's switch it out, deacons. Let's switch it out. Let's bring all those gifts. This is our fun first Sunday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's collect those. Then we're going to move to our tithes and our offerings. That's what we do every week. A dime out of every dollar belongs to who? God. One dollar out of every ten dollar belongs to who? You would rather God breathe on your 90 than try to hold on to the whole 100. Let God breathe and bless the 90%. For those just bringing your tithes and offerings today tangibly, if you're not doing it on the phone, the deacons are here ready to serve you. Come on at this time and bring your offering, bring your gifts. Bring your tithes, bring your offerings, bring your sacrificial seeds that you yeah. want to sow. And if you're watching online or if you have your phone, you can sow at this time. Because just because you gave the $100, that's above tithes and offerings. That's not tithes and offerings. So I thank you all. I can't do this without you. And I love you and I appreciate you for partnering with us in the vision. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're getting ready to get out of here because we got a one o'clock service. 
so you don't have to go home, but uh, amen. Pastor Meeks, can you come give our benediction? I just want you to work today since you're retired. Didn't we hear a wonderful message today? Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Listen, let me ask you a question. How many of y'all pray for your pastor? Can I see your hands? Will you make it a habit to pray for him every day? You do that. We've enjoyed this worship, and I got tired just watching him. God has gifted him with so many gifts, and he pours himself out. And I think I did it about 30 years ago, having three services, but that ain't easy. And the only reason he's having three services is so that all y'all could get in here until y'all build a bigger church. Amen. Amen. But don't, don't just enjoy him. Pray for him. Right. Ask God to give him strength. Yes. Ask God to keep him. Ask God to keep his mind. Don't you know the devil would love to have this anointing? The devil would love to have his mind. The devil would love to have his genius. But if the devil knows that every time he comes after him, God's going to send a thousand fellowship prayers just, just around him. So we're getting ready to go, but we're getting ready to pray for him. God, our Father, we love you. We thank you for the man of God. We thank you for Dr. Clay Evans. We thank you for Pastor Charles Jenkins. But today, let me hear you say today. Today you've given us Dr. Reginald Sharp. And we pray for him. Keep his heart. Keep his mind. Keep his wife. Keep him in Jesus' name. We pray that you would keep giving him inspiration and insight and revelation. Keep him for the next service. Thank you for the last service. Thank you for this service. Now keep him for the next service. Now God, we rejoice in this week. We rejoice in this week because we know that if a tough week is on the way, we already was decided that we're going to bless you at all times and your praise going to be continually in our mouth. So dismiss us from this place, but we stay in your presence in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. Peace, peace. I love you. I thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Y'all go home in peace. Have a great week. I'll see you Tuesday night in Refuel. For those of you who haven't been at all, I'll be looking forward to seeing you. I see you. I love you. Take care of yourselves. Let me go sit down and get ready for this next service. Amen. I love you. Peace. Peace. Good to see you. 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 I love all of you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Peace, peace. Mama Lou, good to see you today. Miss Hazel, my mother's board. This is my mother's board. Happy First Sunday, Fellowship. I'm Veronica Dillard reporting your weekly edition of FNN, Fellowship News Network. Fellowship Bible Academy is returning this month with a new day and time. FBA will now be on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. starting May 30th. This year's theme is next, level up, level up, level up. And we will have in-person and virtual classes. Head on over to our website for more information and to register. Join our Senior Care Ministry for their annual Love Fest on Saturday, May 20th from noon to 3.30 p.m. This will be an afternoon of elegance, socialization, and fun. We are asking everyone to wear red. Please contact the church office by Friday, May 12th to RSVP. Attention, members of the graduating class of 2023. Fellowship is so excited to honor all graduates, pre-K through post-grad on Sunday, June 11th. Registration is required for all graduates. Please go to our website to register. The deadline is May 28th at 11.59 p.m. We are praying for the families of Miss Annie Catherine Betts, the mother of Mr. Ryland Betts, Miss Pearlie Mae Davis, the grandmother of Melanie Smith 
and Stephanie Dunn. Please keep these families and all those that have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. Now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. What's going on, family? What's going on? Listen, it's your friend, your brother, Elder Kevin T. Vassar. I'm so excited. I'm so excited and honored to serve as the Director of Worship and Arts. And today, I have a special announcement. First of all, if you're happy and you're grateful to be alive, come on, take two seconds, clap your hands, and let's bless God for the gift of life today. Come on. Oh, you can do better than that. Come on. Listen, God has been good to us and we're so excited. Today, I have a special announcement for you. I am here to make a special appeal to all of our men. Listen, if you're a man and you're happy about it, if you're a young teenager and you're happy about it, I just want you to wave your hand at me. Come on, I'm looking. Where are all my men? Wave your hands, wave your hands. If you're a man and you're glad about it, put your deep voice and say, you're... All right, come on, ladies, let's make some noise for our men. We celebrate them. And today, my appeal is for our men of Grace Men's Choir. Mother's Day is fastly approaching, and we absolutely love all of our mothers, and we're going to celebrate them in style. And our men's choir, Men of Grace, they will be leading us in worship. Come on, you can clap your hands for that. Ladies, you'll be able to sit down, put on your Mother's Day hats, your special dresses, and be honored as, as well as you should be on that day. I am calling for all men, everybody that waved your hand, every man that's a member of fellowship, I need to see you in the choir stand on Mother's Day. Are you listening to me? On Mother's Day, our men of grace will be leading us in worship, and I need all of our men to participate. We're going to have a power pack rehearsal led by our own brother Dexter Walker on May the 11th. May the 11th, I need to see you here in the main sanctuary at 7 p.m. as we prepare ourselves for Mother's Day. Now listen, if you need more information, if you want to know exactly what we're doing, rehearsing, and all of that great stuff, I want you to reach out to us at men of grace at, at fellowshipchicago.com. Let me say it again. Men of grace at fellowshipchicago.com. We have amazing leadership for our choir. They'll receive you and make sure we remain connected. May the 11th, we want to see a rehearsal on Mother's Day. All three services, we coming strong, man. I want to see your face in the place and let's bless God together. Thank you so much and we'll see you then. Hello, fellowship. I'm Marikia from Fellowships Medical Ministry reminding you that the Kimberly Louise Hollowell Nursing Foundation Gala is on May 13th at the Harbor International Golf Center from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Tickets are on sale now. Please see the flyers posted throughout the church or visit the websites on your screen to donate or purchase your tickets. Don't miss this event. Let's hit the waters of Lake Michigan for a time of live entertainment, food, and fellowship. Come cruise with us for the 73rd church anniversary, Cruising with the Ship, Saturday, September 9th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. We will board at 12 noon. Go get your favorite white outfit and cruise with Pastor Sharp and the Fellowship family on the Odyssey Lake Michigan. Space is limited, so purchase your tickets today at fellowshipchicago.com. The ship will be docking at Greater Harvest Missionary Baptist Church for their 7 p.m. communion service. Pastor Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr. will be the guest preacher and Elder Eric Thomas is the host pastor. Make sure you meet us there. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and social media pages for these announcements and more. For real-time updates, text Fellowship Chicago, one word, to 55949. Have a great week. Peace, peace.